Coming up on this edition of Abled and On Air, Washington County Mental Health Services, Mary Moulton, the Executive Director. All that and much more. Plus, May is Mental Health Month. All that and much more when Abled and On Air starts right now. Welcome to this edition of Able Dinner and Air, the one and only program that focuses on the needs, concerns, and achievements of the differently able. I'm Lauren Seiler. I'm Arlene Seiler. And on this edition of Able Dinner and Air, May is Mental Health Month. We would like to welcome Mary Moulton, Executive Director of Washington County Mental Health Services, former commissioner, a whole lot of <laughs> things. Mom. Mom. Yeah. <laughs> and she's the big cheese of Vermont. Welcome to Thank Able Dinner so on Air. Thank Welcome, you, big cheese. Thank you. <laughs> well, we're in, the cap we're in the cheese capital <laughs> yeah. of the world. Yeah. Well, uh, well, Wisconsin is the cheese capital. That's, that, well, I don't know. It's That's the dairy, debatable. The dairy, we won't go there. The, okay. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, what is the missions and goals of Washington County Mental Health Services? Well, um, primarily, Lawrence, to, to serve. So to serve those in our community who are in need of mental health services, who are in need of services if they have a developmental disability, mm -hmm. um, if they have a substance use disorder, mm -hmm. um, anyone who is having a difficulty in their life that um, feels as if they need some help for it. And that's our main message. Um, there's a lot of trauma that people experience in their lives. And for example, what do you exactly do you mean? Since this is Mental yeah. Health Month, and we're going to deal with a lot of different things, what what is trauma, and the mental health definition of it? So trauma is unique to the individual. So I would never tell you if you told me of something that was very sad, or um, say you suffered some abuse in your life. I would. I, I and you and it was traumatic to you. Um, that is how you define it and I would never tell you that wasn't traumatic. It's something that affects you so that it alters how sometimes you view life um, and it, um, it's, it's something you might need to seek support for over time mm -hmm. and it helps to form your thought process as you go forward. Um, so, uh, you know, a significantly hard thing that happens in life that causes us to have some physical or mental reaction um, mm -hmm. that we have to work through, that can be, the base of that can sometimes be a traumatic event, like mm -hmm. say abuse as a child, for example. Or uh, post-traumatic stress disorder Absolutely. from um, for our World vets, Trade Center or you war betcha. or something along Absolutely. those lines. Absolutely. Now, May is Mental Health Month. Uh, yes. Explain what that is and how Washington County Mental Health is working to help. Well, I think, you know, I'm really glad to know we have a Mental Health Awareness Month because um, mental health hasn't always been the thing we pay attention to most. You know, we pay attention to our health. We think about whether um, hopefully we're eating right, you know, how are we feeling? We're taking care of our heart. We're watching our blood pressure. We've got all those reminders. Mm -hmm. um, people don't always or often say to us, hey, how's your mental health? You know, how are you feeling today? It's not a natural conversation. <laughs> so it's good to bring that up because mental health is health. Mm -hmm. And we aren't just a body, we are a mind and a body and a spirit um, and so we we have to we have to absolutely take care of all those parts of ourselves so mental health awareness is one way to be talking about that and we're doing it by coming on your show for mm -hmm. example mm -hmm. talking about it um, having people realize that if they're having any kind of difficulties they should call, talk to a friend give us a call you know find out where they could get some help if they've been experiencing depression or anxiety um, now, your, your, the history of, uh, what are some of the history of how you came into the field? Uh, um, tell us a little bit about that. Sure. 
Well, um, Washington County mental health has been along, uh, around longer than I have, which is, which is good. I'm not that old. It's been <laughs> around for 50 years. Uh, I've worked at Washington County for 28 years, and I started working as an emergency services screener mm -hmm. on a mobile crisis team. And that, that, that's about um, a 24-7 hotline that we have available in our community for people to call anytime they might um, feel the need to reach out, um, ask a question about themselves or their family. And we have people that answer that line. I was a screener. That means that I answered the line. I gave people support. I worked to plug them into services, maybe some therapy, maybe seeing if they needed a case manager, um, someone who could help them with housing, perhaps, or a job, depending on how severe their needs were. Um, and then getting a call where you might have to go out with a police officer. Um, someone might be, you know. There's been some scary stuff. Yeah, I've sure, had, yeah. sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So you, you know, wherever you go, you go, you go uh, to where you're called when you're emergency services clinician. So it might be to a home, it might be to a police station, it might be to a nursing home, um, to talk to an elderly person who's having difficulty, to someone who who's and it's having always suicidal confidential. thoughts. Always confidential. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, the exchanges that happen in mental health have the same cloak of privacy as do health. Again, it is health, so um, you know exchanges that happen between therapists, clinicians, or anyone who works explain in Washington County of, mental health is private. Explain some of the programs. Of, well, um, you, know, you do you, Washington County mental health runs a suicide prevention program or part of a program. Explain some of that within Washington County Mental Health? Well, certainly our 24-7 hotline is all about that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, from um, just maybe exploring a, a small problem to if you're feeling suicidal mm -hmm. um, or if you have a friend who's feeling suicidal and you just want to call and ask what you might do, um, you can do that. And so the people that are on the other end of that line are trained mm -hmm. clinicians who spend time um, exploring with you what, what, what might be happening in your life, mm -hmm. um, how we could get you into some services, whether it's immediate, if you need to, you know, maybe go to an emergency room and be seen by a psychiatrist immediately. Mm -hmm. We work to link people in at the right time to the services that they need. So suicide prevention is something we really want to work on because, as I'm, I'm sure you know, we, have a, we actually have a high rate of suicide in the state of Vermont. Um, and, and the highest or the, no, or we are not, high... we are not highest. We are not highest, but we are among the highest. So in, um, you know, top 10 states wow. and I, um, for, uh, for rates of suicide per 100,000. And so that's an area where we do need to work, even though we have great access to mental health. I think what we have as a challenge is that, that I was speaking about, which is to have people feel comfortable to come in and kind of lose that stigma to say, I'm having a hard time, you know, I need to come in and talk to someone and see what kind of help there is. Uh, we discussed this in past shows with Washington County, but what is some of the stigma around people with mental illness or, or mental challenges? Um, you know, people might be afraid of a person with a mental challenges, why or why not? Mm -hmm. So, you know, people who have um, serious mental illness, there is, there is no evidence to show that those people are violent. There are people who are experiencing, say, a crisis mm -hmm. uh, and have a mental illness, and at that time, they might have a time where they're escalated and their behavior um, might become violent. But that happens with anyone who's in a mm -hmm. tough situation. So across the board, we want to kind of diminish that notion. Mm -hmm. um, but, um, you know, I think the reason people don't come forward is just historically. Mm -hmm. We have not made it a normal thing to do that. And we need to normalize mental health. It is a part of our health. And I'm really happy to say that in Vermont, our, our medical community is seeing that. Um, they're beginning to talk about how to incorporate mental health supports even in their doctor's offices. Mm -hmm. So, 
you know, we evolved as community mental health centers over time in Vermont when the state hospital mm -hmm. emptied out and we began to develop what services. What state hospital was that? So that was Vermont State Hospital, and we really have been working on this since the 70s, and we call it deinstitutionalization. And yes. so, um, you know, the idea is to have people living in their communities and, um, you know, uh, being, being part of. In 1964, uh, 63, 64, President Kennedy signed into law the Mental Retardation Mental Health Act, Act. To, to Mental Care Act to get more services or to have more services for people who are mentally retarded and or, uh, um, you know, mentally or physically challenged. Mm -hmm. Explain how that has changed over the years. Do we need to work on more uh, stabilization, uh, uh, um, deinstitutionalization, de et cetera? So, so a lot has evolved since mm -hmm. that time, and um, you know, at, including our language on that, and it, we just did a 50-year history because Washington County Mental Health is 50 years old, mm -hmm. really showing graphically how that's changed. And indeed, we used the terminology, as you just pointed out, Lawrence, mental retardation, and we don't utilize that terminology anymore. We, we say a person has a developmental or an intellectual disability, so that's, that's one thing. If we look way back, we used, we used terminology to describe people with mental illness that was what we would call derogatory these days, right? So um, we now you know, speak of someone who um, has a mental health challenge or is experiencing a mental illness. Some people say labeled mentally ill. Um, so, you know, we, we, keep, we keep evolving um, as time goes on and our programs evolve. Back when that happened, money came to the communities and the idea was to empty, to, to bring people out of hospitals. It, and Vermont the, did a little better than some. There was, well, yeah. In, a little. In, in <laughs> New York, there was Willowbrook. Yes. There was Creedmoor, Bellevue Hospital. Yeah. Um, and others. Um, now, in terms of, and that you know, and then we're going to split questions. In terms of staff, yeah, right. Is there a high turnover mm -hmm. with people in the mental health field, or the, or people with special needs? Certain states, yes. Certain states, no. Mm -hmm. Is there a high turnover with um, your agency? Uh, why? And and then the second part to this is. Why is it that sometimes people with uh, people don't want to work in the field of disabilities or special needs? Is there are they scared to? Well, um, you know, I think people who come into our field are really passionate. So my staff, I am very fortunate at Washington County Mental Health. I hope I'm not um, asking about questions. Yeah, no, it's a good question, and um, so there's wonderful passion. The pay mm -hmm. isn't doesn't equate mm -hmm. to that on in other. Uh, areas that in in healthcare, for example. So that's one reason that we have turnover. To your question, yes, we do. Um, it, our turnover has gotten better. The legislature in Vermont saw fit to help us last year with a an increase that uh, brought our staff up to fourteen dollars an hour, and um, you know we're, we were able to push the scale up a little bit. So. With that, we went at Washington County, for example, from a 19% turnover rate, which is high if you talk about the private sector, to a 16%. So one of the factors are dollars. Mm -hmm. um, I think that, you know, it's a real good question you ask because I don't think of um, certainly people who come into work at Washington County Mental Health or other community mental health centers throughout the state know what the work is. Mm -hmm. um, so they come there knowing. Are they scared, though? I don't. I don't um, find that to be the case. Um, there are certainly, um, I think what, what our job is, is to give proper training so that people know that, um, you know, folks that are having, if you're, if you're, chi you're working with children in a school, for example, and we have that, that, um, you know, kids in schools act out. We know that. They do that in the public school system. <laughs> they do that in our school system where we have a specialized school for a small group of kids. Oh, and you do have yep, a specialized yep. school. Yep, and we also have staff that work in all the schools in mm. Washington County. 
providing supports to kids. Um, so, you know, our goal mm -hmm. is to make sure they stay in their school system and, and they can experience some kind of high episodes. Mm -hmm. You want to ask a couple questions? Go ahead. Um, <clears throat> anger management. Yeah. If someone has anger I management. I have to work at that all the time now. <laughs> now, do people in the mental, how, how does your program deal with that? Do they deal with that daily? For people who we're helping? N yeah, like yeah. the anger. Like anger management so anger. We have an anger management. We have groups that assist people with anger management. Um, there's a crossover, certainly, um, with corrections. Corrections might refer some folks to us um, with anger management. So it's generally a group management session that happens where you have peer supports. And I just want to give a shout out to peer supports across the board because that means that people with that I've experience. People and yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. So the anger management model that um, that we have used at Washington County is that kind of support. You know, then you, you also have the opportunity to call out with each other, you know, a behavior maybe um, that it wouldn't have the same effect if I happened to call out that uh, behavior. So uh, we do, we certainly do offer that, um, Arlene, and also help in therapy one on one with people who are having a difficult time with their anger. Go ahead. Like, say, if someone got raped, God forbid, do you help with that? If a woman got raped. Yes. So that might start in an emergency room. Yeah. yeah. And, um, you know, the, the, the emergency room has specially trained staff for that through nursing and examination. And sometimes we if are Washington in. Washington County has Sometimes to be we're involved. In. Sometimes we're involved for some supports. Um, you know, for for a person who has been victimized um, by Be, rape. Because a, a person with uh, physical or mental challenges, if, for example, they were raped or, or sexually abused, it might hit them a little bit yes. different than, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, we're all normal, and we're all, you know, we're normal people. We just might learn differently, but um, it might hit someone differently. Yes, because of trauma. That brings us yeah, right yeah. back to the trauma. Yeah. So, trauma. you know, you, if, if they've had experience, if they've been traumatized earlier in life, perhaps, if they've been abused as a child and then they experience another sexual assault, um, this is extremely difficult. And that is, uh, in addition to the wonderful supports we have through our domestic violence support systems here in central Vermont, through mm. Circle, for example, um, we might, though, because that emergency services team is available to the ER through the, the, the job I used to do, which was the screener, mm. um, you know, well, so what we, exactly we, would, be, the screener we would be going out just to provide support. A screener, a screener is, does an, an assessment of a person who's having a mental health crisis. Mm -hmm. And that is a very wide range these days. So the example we just talked about, which is, you know, just support, knowing um, emotions that a person might go to and being able to help them to uh, be calm and work through the moment to actually doing an assessment for someone who might be experiencing uh, or a, 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 um, any kind of feeling to harm themselves okay. or, har or harm someone else. So let's take a typical day, right? <laughs> Your typical day. Yeah. Right? You're the executive director. Um, knowing the fact that you've worked for 28 years. Now there's pros and cons to a job. Mm -hmm. Bad work. Best moments, worst moments. <laughs> How can you uh, change that within your position or so on and so forth? Well, you know, I think um, the best laid foundation I had was as a screener because I learned a skill set of working with people in really difficult times. So whether you're working on a policy, as I might now, <laughs> mm -hmm. to working with someone who, um, who is, uh, you know, uh, feeling like uh, they want to they die and um, mm -hmm. by suicide, you know, mm -hmm. you're, you're sitting and you're building a relationship. You want to work with them through that moment. My, my, you're, you're building a skill set, actually, to help just work with people. And then you have to, 
interface with um, other providers to try to get them the help that they need, which is another level. So, you know, I think the hardest times, um, certainly, and most humbling times, are sitting with folks. Um, I used to do sudden death notification, mm -hmm. and a really hard piece of work. I've worked in hospitals. So that's one of the one yeah. of the hardest pieces, I think, is to tell someone that kind of bad news and be with yeah. them and present in and the moment. And how they deal with it. Yeah. And so, so uh, that, you actually that, had. To, I apologize for interrupting yep. you. You actually had to go to someone's house. Knock on their door like a police. Well, yes, police officer the police. does the same thing, or with the, or police. With the police, or with yeah. uh, 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 veterans, mm -hmm. whatever, mm -hmm. and notify a family member. That's, that's right. Oh, wow. So, so or being at an accident scene. So that kind that that kind of work, I found um, humbles you and helps you put your feet on the ground. And so, um, while those were really hard moments, they were the greatest teaching moments. And um, I, I never forget that. I never forget the work, the hard work every day that the people who work for our organization do in helping others. It really is service. It goes back to that mission. And yes, we get paid for it. But you know, it's I think it's not all about the pay. It sometimes. isn't. It isn't. It's it's knowing at the end of the day that um, you know you're reminded how hard people's lives are sometimes mm -hmm. and that you can be a part of when, maybe trying to help. When you can step into someone's shoes, yeah. uh, example, um, someone, if someone doesn't know a person with mental illness or mm -hmm. someone with autism or, or on the spectrum, step into, that, That's in, right. in, into their shoes and then get to know them. That's right. Yeah, yeah, and that's you know that's very hard for any of us to do. And I, I have tremendous you know respect for people with those challenges every day. Mm -hmm. And um, so you know how do I translate that to what I do now? And the good and the, the and the bad is the good, the bad, the ugly is yeah. you know w whether you're trying to fight for um, you know more dollars for the system, uh, the community system mm -hmm. that um, assists people the way that we do through outreach, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, whether it is working with our hospitals and medical now providers to, uh, to bring uh, more information on mental health to them mm -hmm. and to try to integrate systems so that we're not paying more for our citizens of Vermont, but that we're using services that are really, really professional services as we have at Washington County Mental Health and trying to bring those in more and integrate into health care. That's one of our great challenges. Well, more questions? Have you gone to like high schools in case like teenagers need uh, counseling? Yes, so we have a whole children's division mm -hmm. that works with kids in high schools. Um, you know, certainly uh, for myself, I've gone into classrooms and talked to kids, um, young teenagers, about some of their struggles, um, oh, yeah. you know, uh, you know, and, and educating about mental health. We have a course yeah. called Mental Health First Aid, which you might talk about. So when you talk about first aid, yes. we think about physical care. Again, we have a mental health first aid course. Yeah, so, if someone wants to take that course. Yes, they it, can do so. Uh, we have it available. Yes. Can you so explain we, a little bit about We give it to groups. There's one called Youth Mental Health mm. First Aid. And so that might be teaching children uh, or teaching teachers, for example, about signs that they might be looking for that someone's having a right. mental health issue, um, an emotional issue. Would you teach How to advocates? respond to that? Uh, we would absolutely teach advocates. We teach groups of lawyers. We teach, um, you know, uh, people from uh, our community just generally. Uh, people who uh, come to us or call us because they've got a group from a church that wants to learn more. Um, so we do youth mental health first aid and adult a free, mental health is first it a aid. Free course. Free course. Um, in some cases, we, we ask for the provision of the materials to be purchased, which is just partial book charges. But other than that, mm -hmm. we, we provide that service. OK, yeah. now how long has that been going on? Um, we've been doing that now in Vermont for probably the past five years and at Washington County for the past uh, three or four. And mm -hmm. um, in Vermont, mm -hmm. we have trained over 2,000 people. 
mm -hmm. in mental health first aid. And do you get a um, do you get a certificate at the end? Get, yes, you get your certificate at the end, and uh, it's an eight hour course currently. So we're even able to split it up because it's hard sometimes for someone to come together for an eight hour day. So we'll do a four and four. Mm -hmm. You know. Now. Um, it, Washington County Mental Health has been around for a long time. Yes. Let's go back. Back in the 1970s, was it, was it evolving? Yes. Um, explain past, some present, mm -hmm. some future. Yeah. Um, who created Washington County Mental Health? Yeah. So, uh, again, I think it was, you know, as you talked about those acts that came about, there was a, there was yeah. a move. Um, and that is that late 60s when Washington County Mental Health evolved. It had a, a different name at the time, Winooski um, something. I can't mm -hmm. quite even remember what it was, but shortly thereafter changed its name. So it started with um, helping people to come out of the state hospital over in Waterbury. Mm -hmm. There were over a thousand people there. Mm -hmm. Hiring actually through a grant that was creating the mm -hmm. emergency services team. Yeah. Um, bringing people on out, creating case managers, mm -hmm. um, then moving along toward adult services, giving therapy, so we hired therapists. Mm -hmm. um, the progression came over time, um, and Roger Strauss was our first executive director. Mm -hmm. uh, we've only had three executive directors at Washington County. I'm the third one. And Who's Paul Roger Dupre, Strauss? Roger Strauss, Paul Dupre. I've heard of Paul Dupre. Yep. And uh, then myself, I've been, I'm on my fifth year. So, yeah. um, How many years are you allowed to be? There's, there's a, until, until you're retired or they throw you out. One <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, uh, both Roger and Paul worked um, through a number of years until they decided upon retirement. They mm -hmm. were excellent executive directors who continued to grow through the need. And I think that's what we do at Washington County is recognize um, where the gaps in our community are, and then really um, try to work to fight for dollars so that we can develop the programming, whether it be for adults, children, families. Um, you know, our developmental services division came along back then too. We closed Brandon Training School mm -hmm. in the mm -hmm. early 90s. We took the last person out of the Brandon Training School. Our, mm -hmm. uh, was our, it similar to a Willowbrook type of? It's a, it was specifically for people with developmental disabilities. So now, um, was it, it like and, atrocities and different things? Um, going you know, on? I mean, through the years. There were all of, I'm sure, those those reports, but no, Brandon Training School, you know, again, we have evolved, and I'm sure there were practices back then as there were at the state hospital, mm -hmm. uh, which we would call atrocities mm -hmm. these days. Um, there were certainly well, episodes well, reported of abuse, a, but there I'm were- I'm not asking a bad question. Right, no, there, there, there were those um, thought practices that would be helpful, like putting people into ice baths. We would never think in such that to do such a thing these mm. days, but that so that that you know these were closed institutions. Really, what we recognized is the need to get people into our community and have them have more healthy, holistic, integrated lives. Mm -hmm. And on the developmental, to be more independent. Yes, for people with developmental disabilities, I think you know really working very hard in Vermont. We have people who are working. Um, you know, in our communities, they have jobs, not in a sheltered workshop. They have jobs in our businesses, in our community. And mm -hmm. that is an advancement that actually we received an international award for in Vienna two years ago as mm -hmm. a state in wow. the state of Vermont so for being so the, progressive. The country, Vienna. The state, the, yes, Austria. 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 Yeah. Um, nice now, Uh, how, how can I put it? What are some uh, future goals mm. that Washington County Mental Health might have or is having? Because I understand that you're writing policy, so explain some of that. Yeah. Well, I, you know, our future goals um, are to continue to find the needs in our community. I just had a wonderful panel we did last night in. Uh, mm -hmm in Plainfield, and I think mm -hmm. it's to help our communities become more trauma-informed. Mm -hmm. It's to help people in our communities who feel like they're outside of the community to be more included. 
um, and um, the other part of that is for um, for us to um, again integrate our services into healthcare services so that people see that mental health is actually health and taking care of oneself. So, you know, we've done this approach for years. We've done case management, we've done care coordination. Um, these are things that now our, our healthcare partners are becoming much more aware of and that um, expenditures could be reduced. So I deal a lot now with the kind of the money side of the house. That's, I changed that mm. skill set from the street to, okay, how do I convince people to, um, you know, um, see the best practices and can we get paid for those. So my job is to continue to see that we might be able to grow our services as needed, integrating with health and community. And that's kind of the crux of it right now. Ask question. Um, <coughs> it's okay. During uh, mental health awareness, what what do they do? They explain like when how people have different mental health issues. So so different. You know, we have ten agencies throughout the state that do this work, and and people, um, you know. They, they recognize mental health awareness by getting out in the community, making special efforts to talk about it more. One thing um, we are doing this month, and I had one of these sessions last night, I was just mentioning out in Plainfield. Mm -hmm. We had a small group that gathered, and we, we, we held a, a forums last year mm -hmm. in the community to mm -hmm. talk about mental health crisis. What does that mean? How are our communities doing? What do we do to respond to that? Um, that's raising awareness and just talking together. So we had a great group out there mm -hmm. uh, last night that gathered at the town hall. There was uh, a nice circle of people. Mm. And we, we, we talked about um, you know the needs in school systems, mm -hmm. um, getting upstream a little bit so that we can um, ha talk about healthy lives and including mental health and how we treat each other um, and how we stay healthy and do that before we get older and we've created bad habits. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, you know, making sure we have hobbies, making sure we have things that are healthy and of interest, making sure we explore whether we're happy. Yeah. What is it that creates happiness? And, you know, that's the crux of our mental health. You know, some people think that sounds kind of frou frou, you know? But it really, it's at the core of us or, to look and or seek. Or if someone needs, for example, if someone needs, um, they call it, oh, I'm taking a mental health day. A mental health for day. For myself. Sure. Yeah, that's great. Or, or for us. Yes. You know. Yeah. Um, so, in, you know, Mental Health Awareness Day, I'd encourage everybody to take a mental health day. Think about where your life is. What's giving you some pleasure? Um, how you give yourself a, some positive thing that's happening in your day, recognize it. Even mm -hmm. if life is really, really hard, what is one thing today that you could do to go out, even if it's taking a walk down the sidewalk and feeling this kind of chilly air outside that we're having today, um, but a beautiful sunny day to say, this yeah. feels invigorating, this feels good, I'm doing this for me, uh, taking a deep breath with it and just being aware that 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 raises our spirits, and that's why I talk about mind, body, spirit, because it's how it raises our spirits to keep us more emotionally healthy. Mm. And, and physically, now. It pays off, what, Other, it's, otherwise your physical health goes into what, the dumper. Do you guys do anything, when we talk about mental health, Yeah. do you have like any physical like exercise programs? Do. Or do you do anything? for the physical body. Absolutely, the absolutely. Mm -hmm. We have a place in, in uh, Barrie at 23 Summer Street we call Well Space. Mm -hmm. oh, and uh, that's a place where we invite uh, people in. We have exercise there. We have classes. Uh, we have yoga classes. Cooking uh, classes. Cooking classes, you know, learning, uh, learning to have better nutrition. Uh, we do mindfulness if people find that that would be helpful. Um, we, we also, in different programs, we do have wellness segments, so we help people if they'd like to track um, their blood pressure, if they'd like to stop smoking, mm. and they'd well, like you to... you have a cessation program. Absolutely. We it's, have tobacco cessation program throughout our entire agency, so... Now, from what I understand, that 
tobacco cessation program is only for clients of Washington, Washington County, County yeah. Mental Health. And explain staff. Little, and staff. <laughs> so explain a little bit about the tobacco cessation program. Well, it's been, you know, we've had that, um, we've had that, work, been working on that for several years. We have a, a clinician in one of our programs, Bill Fagnerauer, who works on that with one of our nurses, uh, mm -hmm. Rachel uh, Lavalley, and um, we, we do a screen with a person to find out what their habits are. Um, and then we start plugging in supports, which are group supports, mm -hmm. as well as individual supports. We also, um, you know, make sure that people have tools so that, you know, if they, uh, when they're trying to, we give them tools like if they're trying to give things up, do they want to suck on a lifesaver? You know, what are those things that would be helpful uh, with their habits? Recording those and then celebrating uh, celebrating when you have a success and um, that's that part around recognition that you've done even if you go back to smoking so we have people who've quit smoking you know people who have some significant mental health issues they're because dealing they, with every day because a lot of buildings they, uh, yeah. uh, are now smoke free ours are all smoke free yeah. yeah so you know but but say you know you have a lot of struggles emotionally and you're a smoker it's really hard to give up a habit you know um, so, yeah, people want to do it. They know it's better for their health. So they try and then they go back, but that's okay with us. Mm -hmm. So you go back to smoking, you're going to come back to the group. We're going to talk about that. We're going to try to, you know, if you're ready to stop again, we're going to support that. And Do you have an AA a program? A, back and forth. Alcohol, Alcoholics Anonymous or 12 step type we, of thing? We don't sponsor that. AA is AA. So okay, we support. I apologize. No, we support people going. And um, we, we absolutely let them know about that resource because it's so important. We also let them know about our recovery centers, the Turning Point over in Barrie. Um, and we, we want, what I've learned through time, I think, is um, that it's different strokes for different folks. And what might be helpful uh, to you, Lawrence, one, might not one be resource. for me. Yeah, exactly. Right, right. So I might really need talk therapy and talking to a therapist for 50 minutes might be helpful to me. For you, it might be more helpful to do that yoga session and do some mindfulness. And what we find in talking to alternatives people, to medication. Yep. We talk, yes. And those do assist with alternatives. So what, what we find is in asking people after all those things what helps, mm -hmm. they let us know. Some might say, wow, the most successful thing to help me cope and to help me reduce my anxiety was mindfulness. Someone else might say, you know what's helped me for a long time over the last three months has been that I could speak to my therapist. Some might say, I did both those things at Washington County Mental Health that's what helped me get to success so that I don't need that support anymore. So, you know, our mission is also to help people move on so that they can and, uh, not need us. Okay. That's great. I'm going to ask you a couple <laughs> more questions. Uh, real quick, alternatives to medication. Yes. Right. Um, yeah. You know, it's one thing for a pharmacist to give you medication. But what are some, well, you mentioned some of them. Yeah. Are you guys expanding on more alternatives to medication? Certainly, um, you know, we listen to what the people who come in to see us mm -hmm. need. And um, we have psychiatry. Our doctors are there to prescribe medications mm -hmm. to assist. And that, that what, but we have therapy, which we often, when we see a person come in, the first thought is not medication. The first thought might be you're having a traumatic event. Let's see if we can get you into this service to help first. Mm -hmm. um, but that medication piece is there, and for some people is um, essential, they feel, to their well-being. So others would not find it helpful mm -hmm. um, or would be worried about side effects. Um, so, you know, we, we just talk. It's a one-on-one -on -one experience. The other thing that we're going to begin to ex examine is mm -hmm. open dialogue. Um, you know, that's another way for people who work for us to be thinking about um, talking with people who have mental illness and um, being accepting of where they are with their mind, which is really important. a lot really of people important. don't accept people Absolutely. sometimes with mental illness. And sometimes in accepting, it can help a person to accept 
their experience a little bit better. So it's a combination, again, okay. different strokes for different folks. What are some misconceptions around people with mental illness or physical challenges that might be uh, when they first meet them, in mm -hmm. your opinion? That, that, that people, um, pe people with severe mental illness aren't smart? You know, that's a misconception, mm -hmm. absolutely incorrect. Or, that, or they, they don't graduate college, which right, isn't true. That's absolutely untrue. Um, you know, uh, so, it, but, but I think it, whether we're talking, and, and that people with developmental disabilities are limited and can't grow any further. These, that is that totally is, untrue. Uh, we're yeah. watching people just absolutely blossom as we give them opportunity. So, um, so I, I think you know one thing we need to remember is that in the course of a mental illness, people can work toward recovery, and we talk about recovery. Mm -hmm. um, didn't used to. That's one other one of those evolutionary things. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we used to put people in hospitals, and that's where we thought they should be. We want to be very careful as we look at the problem of emergency room backups and the need for hospital beds mm -hmm. that we don't overshoot, that we don't build what too exactly many hospital do you mean beds, by that? that we don't build too many hospital beds, mm -hmm. that we make sure that we continue to have the money within our communities to support the community services. This is the upstream piece. If we can do more here, we don't need higher levels of care. Yet we might need a few more beds, but let's not build so many that we find ourselves back to a self-fulfilling, um, let's keep more beds full because we have them. And another misconception, if I can put, um, just because your relative had, had a mental challenge. Doesn't mean you're going to. You, exactly. So explain a little bit about that misconception. Yeah. So, sir, so, so, you know, we talk about mental illness now and we consider it a physiological, a physical uh, illness of the, uh, that's working within the brain. Yes. And so that's our challenge and that's why doctors think about medication. Um, that, that's, but that's also why alternative ideas come about because there's a certain way that you know, we can work our minds and our bodies, we know we have great strengths we sometimes don't tap into. So, um, you know, that the, the, the mental illness piece is, we, we talk about recovery and uh, for people with developmental disabilities, mm -hmm. we talk about, in, in both cases, we talk about self-determination. We talk, we, we shouldn't think that, um, you know, people cannot achieve because they certainly can. Mm -hmm. And they do, and it's remarkable. And we simply need to give opportunity um, rather than making assumptions. Mm -hmm. Making assumptions is a bad thing. Okay. That's a mistake. Why is it a mistake? Really quick it, before it's, we end. Yeah, it's, it's a mistake because, um, because we're forgetting that, that, that whole person. Um, and we're forgetting that if we give children an opportunity to achieve, they will. If we give adults the opportunity, they will. The problem often is that our community and our society um, may not have, people may not have the money to be able to access some of the things that would give them more opportunity. So as a community, we're challenged more and more with um, expanding beyond ourselves to include others. Okay. Um, well, I would like to thank you for joining us on this edition of Able to Learn Thank you, Lawrence. I really appreciate it. For more information on Washington County Mental Health, you can uh, log on to their website, www.wcmhs.org, <coughs> or you can uh, call their emergency number if you have an emergency. Uh, you can call their emergency number at 802 Two two nine zero five nine one. That's two two nine zero five nine one. This has been Able Den on Air. I'm Lauren Seiler. I'm Arlene Seiler. See you next time.